Hey, this is Mark Henry, bringing you more information on the paranormal and occult to hopefully increase your understanding and improve your life. Uh, I want to bring this video to a special person who, when I asked if anybody wanted to hear a specific subject on the occult, they spoke up. So that this video is dedicated to my student, Kayla. So this is for Kayla. Um, what we're going to talk about today is um, possession and exorcisms. So let me start out by, uh, I guess, defining on a very uh, rudimentary way what an exorcism is. So an exorcism is a formal process of uh, ridding someone of an indwelling um, evil spirit. And, you know, there's many different definitions of evil, and we won't really go into that because that would take uh, many, many videos. Um, when I think of exorcisms, maybe it's just because I was brought up in the West, I think of the Catholic, um, I think of the Catholic priests, Catholicism, um, maybe that's because I grew up watching The Exorcist, the 1973 version, and they actually got a lot of the, the movie right um, what, through research. Um, they embellished a little bit, they, they changed a couple things, for example, the um, possessed person was not a female, it was a little boy, so that was different, but um, many of the you know, same things that happened in the story happened uh, in real life. Oh, so getting back to exorcisms. Okay, so um, it's a formal process. Um, the Catholic priest uh, has to get permission from their bishop in order to get an actual exorcist. Um, it isn't just, okay, well, any priest will do, throw them in there and, and do it. It's a, uh, an investigation has to ensue. They have to rule out any type of uh, medical or psychiatric illness, so they have to consult, and um, the possessed person has to be interviewed by psychiatrists, MDs, um, psychologists, and the like. So it isn't just a very fast uh, process. Um, but they take it seriously. They own the whole, Catholicism owns the whole exorcist uh, and possession phenomena. In fact, they believe that only um, a priest and a priest exorcist can effectively uh, depossess um, a person. And I guess it's part of the, the nature of their faith. Now, I myself am really good friends with a priest. Um, he and I went to undergrad together in religious studies, and he later on went and finished his education in um, the seminary. Um, so I've talked to him about these matters. Um, he, in fact, tells me that there is a covert way of doing a minor exorcism. They call it a house blessing. So if you are Catholic and you have someone go in there, a priest, uh, they're actually trying to rid the place of any type of nasties that may be lingering around. They don't need any type of special permission from a uh, church hierarchy to do that. Um, they can just kind of go in and um, take care of things. But that doesn't always do the job because, of course, you can be someone can be possessed by a demon. Okay. I myself have also have actually met um, an exorcist. He was an exorcist. Uh, from the um, Diocese of Lafayette in 1997. I'm, I went with my friend, he was doing a special project uh, for our, his religious studies class and we met him and a very nice man and he was very convincing. Um, told um, a lot of stories and of course um, withholding um, some of the uh, confidential demographic information. Um, but I enjoyed meeting with that uh, gentleman. Uh, so, um, but Catholics aren't the only ones who deal in the exorcisms phenomena. Um, Protestant um, Christians do it and certain, I think, evangelicals um, uh, go ahead and do this. Um, they call them uh, deliverance ministries. <clears throat> and they don't need any type of special permission um, from uh, their higher-ups to do this. It's just part of their, their faith. Now, one thing that you find in common with both uh, systems, whether it's the Catholics or the Protestants, is that they use um, Bible verses and they will pray um, to God for the exorci exorcism of these uh, demons to come out of the person. So there's a common thread, even though there are some differences uh, according to each person's faith. Uh, now, the 
Now there are also, when we're talking about um, demon possession and exorcism, this is not indigenous to just Christianity. You'll find um, anytime there is a very um, a, a high elevated God in any type of religion, you will find um, demons. You'll find demons even in Buddhism, which uh, most people think that Buddhism is strictly kind of an atheistic type of thing where they honor it, honor the Buddha, um, but and they don't have a, a god, but that's not completely true. There are sects of Buddhism that have some really horrific uh, demons that you don't want to encounter. There's also exorcist in um, Japanese mysticism, religion, Shintoism. In fact, I think I was reading um, a Shinto priest uh, was exorcising a fox spirit out of someone. <laughs> so, and that goes into a different matter that depending on the culture, will detem determine the types of demons and their personalities uh, that come through. Um, but we might talk about that um, some other time. But um, just to let you know that um, there are demons in, in the philosophies of other religions, uh, Hinduism, of course, like I said, Islam, um, Buddhism, Shintoism. Um, the whole idea of evil spirits goes to pre-organized religion, even into the idea of shamans, the the native um, healers and medicine men who would work in the spirit world and try to uh, battle demons and try to take them out of um, ordinary people, people that are part of their tribe. Um, so it's, it's, it's been around forever, this whole idea. Um, but like I said, it's different cross-culturally. Um, just like if you were to deal, if you were Japanese and a non-Christian, you probably wouldn't encounter the type of demons you would probably wouldn't encounter um, Asmodeus or um, Zozo or some of these other other ones that are part of the Ju Judeo-Christian uh, phenomena. You'd encounter other things. Uh, for example, I told you about the fox spirit. Um, a lot of um, religions that deal with nature, they might have uh, some angry ancestors for instance, that one would have to rid oneself of. But it kind of gets you thinking, okay, and this is just speculation, okay. What is it about the fact that all of these different cultures, if let's say they're non-Christian, why do they have the different demons? And I think part of it is that one's cultural values and belief systems shape the demon that you get. And that's not to say that everyone's making it up it could be one of a couple things. It could be that as part of your belief systems that you may be able to tune into different realities that correspond to the particular demons, for instance. Um, it also um, could be the fact that these entities, if they are real, are manifesting themselves in specific ways that are different and correspond to the culture. Another possibility. So there are metaphysical possibilities, and there are kind of the social aspects of it where our brain is interpreting these demons, um, and they are acting in accordance with our uh, values and uh, beliefs. Uh, another thing is that there are people who specifically practice things like demonology or uh, demonolatry, um, which they actually use these demons in order to uh, make things happen magically. More money, more love, more healing. And uh, also to, to break up a myth is that there are demons who do healing. <laughs> you can even find that, I believe, in the Bible. I was actually uh, um, watching a movie actually where the Jews were accusing Jesus of conjuring demons for healing. And I remember when I was um, little hearing, I said, wow, demons do healing? I didn't know that. <laughs> well, um, apparently they do. They just don't do it the right way, I guess. Um, now, I have personally have never encountered any um, demons that I can identify as far as the image and the tradition and the philosophy that is found in the, a lot of the sacred books in the Bible or even in Hollywood, because, you know, Hollywood embellishes things as well. I have encountered trickster spirits. I've encountered spirits that try to distract me from doing healing. Um, those spirits who will try to derail my efforts, but it's just something you have to deal with. It's just like 
everyday society, there are sometimes people who are going to try to um, subvert your efforts or, or do what they want. And so it's just par for the course as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about exorcism and possession, I actually have a um, good book to recommend, and that is by Malachi Martin, which is called, let's see if we can see, Hostage to the Devil. Um, Hostage to the Devil is a book that is really well written. It, it actually reads like a novel. Malachi Martin is a former priest, a theologian, who um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, actually has done exorcism and, and what he does in the book as he talks about uh, five cases of exorcisms and he's obtained um, the notes and careful documentation in order to reconstruct what happened and also based on eyewitness accounts. So I highly recommend it. Um, if you start reading it, you will get very involved in it because like I said, it's well written, it, it reads uh, much like you were reading a, um, a fantasy novel. So, anyway, thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe, and if you get a chance, comment as well. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.